John chapter number 7. The Bible says in verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for them children singing. What a blessing that was, Lord. God, we thank you for being so good to us. Now, Father, we know it's cold outside, and we know that, Lord, uh, folks have faced some difficult things this week and some troubles and some valleys and some heartaches. And, Lord, we realize we live in a day that it's wicked and, and we're like the days of Lot and the days of Noah when it seems like man continually all that they they have in their imaginations and their thoughts is wickedness. Lord, on every corner of every street, it seems like wickedness abounds. But Lord, I'm glad we've got this oasis, we've got this haven, we've got this refuge that your people can come out from among the world, assemble themselves in the house of God. Lord, we can come and worship you in spirit and in truth. We can come seeking you, hungering for you, longing for you, and God, you will not disappoint. Uh, you'll take up your bow, you'll help us, you'll sit down amongst us, uh, and God, you'll do something in our midst. Uh, Father, we're not worthy of it, but we sure do long for it. Uh, Father, we pray for the next few minutes, uh, uh, you'd put a hedge about this place. Uh, we do plead the blood of the Lord Jesus upon your house. Uh, God, we pray that, Lord, you'd rest our tension. Uh, God, you'd speak to our hearts. Uh, I pray you'd revive the saints of God. Uh, I pray for those that are low, you'd lift them up. Uh, those that need a touch, you'd put your hand on them. Uh, those that, Lord, are thirsty, you'd give them to drink. Uh, God, I pray for those in our midst that may not be saved. Uh, God, I pray you'd speak to their hearts. Uh, I pray, God, you'd remove uh, all the excuses and all the obstacles. Uh, God, I pray that, God, you'd draw them through cords of love. Uh, we'd see them saved by the good grace of God. Uh, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, glorify your name. Uh, show up big and show out. Uh, Father, we'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy uh, and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Uh, amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention uh, to these, these verses as a way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, the thirsty soul. The Bible says in verse 37, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, If any man thirst, uh, let him come unto me uh, and drink. Uh, I've got news for you this morning. If you've come today and your soul is thirsty, uh, you've come to the right place. Uh, I've got news for you. I don't have anything to help you. Uh, uh, can I say nobody in this building can help you, uh, but we can point you to the one uh, who can satisfy your soul. Uh, if you're thirsty today, uh, why don't you do what he said? Uh, he said, if any man's a thirst, let him come unto me, uh, and I uh, will give him to drink. Uh, 
Uh, the Lord has something for a thirsty soul. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, I've seen some uh, who used to thirst for the things of the world, uh, but they found themselves at Jesus' feet, uh, and they no longer thirst for the things of the world uh, because He satisfied their never-dying soul. Uh, there's help for a thirsty soul. I want you to notice, if you will, the trusting soul. Look, if you will, in verse number 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You find that in Jeremiah 2.13. But this spake he of the Spirit, in which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. We that are believers today, looking back on this passage, know what it's talking about. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, Jesus hadn't went to Calvary yet. He hadn't been buried, hadn't rose again, uh, hadn't ascended back to the Father, and the Comforter had not been sent. Uh, but he's speaking uh, uh, for those that would believe on him. Uh, it says that uh, uh, in verse 38, uh, and it says it in verse 39. Uh, he that believeth on me uh, uh, shall out of his belly flow raven waters. This is referring to the same thing he told the woman at the well uh, in John chapter number 4 uh, that he had a water if she drank of it uh, she'd never thirst again uh, and out of her would spring up wells of water uh, I'm glad hallelujah I got a drink uh, some 45 years ago uh, and my soul has never thirsted again uh, it's amazing uh, along about Friday uh, I get a longing uh, and it starts a bubbling uh, by the time I get here Sunday it's a flowing well and I can't wait to see what God's going to do I've got news for you you've got to believe on him can I say most people believe in Jesus if we polled the world uh, that have heard the gospel, uh, that have been around church any at all, uh, even some that don't go to church, they believe in Jesus. Many believe he was a prophet. Many believe he was a good man. Many believe he was a religious man. Uh, many believe even that he's God's son. But can I say the devils believe that and they fear and tremble. It's not enough to believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. They do documentaries on Jesus. They write books about Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. To know him, you have to believe on him. You have to put your trust in what he did on Calvary for your soul and for your sin. We see the trusting soul, the one who believes on him, the one who turns from their life and turns to him and repents and asks him to save them. Mm -hmm. They are the trusting soul. You see, you'll never get to heaven on your merit. I've got news for you. You won't get to heaven believing in Jesus. Oh, that's good. Amen. You'll only get to heaven when you believe on Him. Sure. When you humble yourself and you ask Him to save you. When you trust Amen. in what He did for you to save you. Can I say your works won't save you? All your good deeds are as filthy rags. Your money won't save you. Your kindness and giving to charity will not save you. The only thing that can save you is Jesus Christ. And you must put your faith and trust in Him. We see the thirsty soul. We see the trusting soul. I want you to notice the torn souls. Look in verse number 40. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh uh, of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where he was? So there was a division among the people because of him. There were torn souls. Can I say, uh, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, Christ is a uniter. Satan is a divider. You know why there was division? Because Satan was trying to steal away all that Jesus had just said. Amen. Now what I fear, Miss Mary, is that sitting here today there are torn souls. There are folks that say, well, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. And I know He'd save me, but I just don't know that today's the day I need to get saved. And they're torn. You remember when you used to be torn? Aren't you glad you gave in and let Jesus save you? Huh? It's a whole lot better life, isn't it? Huh? Everything you used to hold on to to keep you from getting saved, you're glad you junked that, aren't you? Huh? 
Well, is he able to save? Yes. From the gutter to the uttermost, is he not? Sure. Huh? Sure is. He's a savior. He came seeking to save, and he wants to save you. Yes. And in your heart, you want to be saved, but you're torn. Sure. You're offering up excuses why you're not saved today. Well, I'd have to give up this. I got news for you. You don't have to give up anything to get saved. You just trust in Jesus. And I, can I help you something? You don't have to give it up. There's just certain things He just takes. Huh? Feel on your testimony. You just sang for Jesus, but on your testimony, did you not used to say that before you got saved, you was foul mouthed? Yes, sir. You're not foul mouthed anymore, anyway, are you? No, sir. You didn't quit being a foul mouth. He just took it. He just took it away. From he you. put praise in your lips, didn't he? Huh? It's just, a, it's just a magical thing that Jesus is supernatural. Only God can do it, huh? Only God can save you and only God can change you. And he will change you if he saves you. Mm. Those things you're holding on to, you think you can never give up. Jesus just has a way of doing away with them, huh? He just wants your heart. You just give yourself to Jesus. Just watch what he does in your life, huh? huh? Miss Veronica, you, would you believe 10 years ago you'd been up singing for Jesus and know what you were singing about? You said the other night in your testimony you never thought you'd been in church with that knucklehead, huh? That heathen, that, that sorry, no good. By, by the way, you gotta, you got to have him show you a picture. He's got a picture from many years ago when he looked like that guy that was on Top Gun, Anthony Edwards, Goose. He looked just like him. huh? You know why that guy's not in movies anymore? Because now he looks like Brian. Who wants to go see that? huh? We want to see George Clooney, not that, huh? Huh? But listen, she would have never dreamed she'd have been in church singing for Jesus, uh, knowing what she's singing about. Uh, why is she here? Because she trusted in Jesus. Uh, she quit being torn. Uh, and Jesus saved her and changed her. We've seen torn souls. I want you to know something else in these verses. I want you to notice tarnished souls. Look at verse 44. And some of them would have taken him but no man laid, laid hands on him. They wanted to throw him in jail. Mm -hmm. hmm? Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? You see, there were some that were tarnished. They didn't want to hear what Jesus had to say. They hated his teachings and his preaching. They hated what he stood for. And they wanted to do away with him. Matter of fact, when they did arrest him, when they did crucify him, when they did beat him beyond recognition, you know they broke all their laws to do it? Amen. One of the big ones was they tried him at night. That was against the law. Isn't it amazing when people are in a position of power, they do away with the law to get their way? Oh, yeah. Sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? Anyway, that's a whole other message. Huh? It amazes me how companies will have uh, uh, their handbooks and their guidelines and their things until it uh, messes up with how they want to conduct business. They'll junk all that stuff. Huh? How many men thought they'd work somewhere and have a good retirement program until the CEO realizes they needed to take the retirement away? Hmm? Can I help you with something? There's people that way in churches. They want power. They don't want forgiveness. And there's a lot of folks who are tarnished. Mm, their yea doesn't mean yea, and their nay doesn't mean nay. Can I say it sent a lot of people to hell because they got to looking at people who were tarnished. Can I say you better get your eyes off of people. People will disappoint you. But you know where you need to put your eyes on him. He's never failed anybody. He's altogether lovely. He's the chiefest of 10,000 of my soul. Sure. But there are tarnished souls. Oh, I hope you're not tarnished today. I hope that you're not so seared on having your way that you won't follow the way. Hmm? Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And then I want you to notice there were some truthful souls. Look at these, these fellows that came to the chief priests. Look what they said in verse 46. The officers answered... Never man spake like this man. Hmm? And I say, can you imagine hearing Jesus preach? Hmm? Never man spake like him. I mean, Jesus would start talking and he'd read their thoughts and he'd tell them what they was thinking. How do you argue with him? Huh? 
I mean, never man speak like this man. Uh, uh, he didn't speak dogma. He speak truth, my dear friends. And he spoke it because he was full of grace and love. Never man speak like him. So we see truthful souls. Well, I'm interested, if you will, down in verse 38. He says, He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I'm going to preach with God's help for just a few minutes this morning on rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. It don't matter if you're a thirsty soul, if you're a trusty soul, if you're a torn soul, if you're a tarnished soul, if you're a truthful soul. My dear friend, what matters is do you have rivers of living water in your soul? Hmm? I got to thinking about rivers of living water. I got to thinking about this passage. I couldn't get away from it. Can I say living water shows that one's alive? Hmm? The Bible says in Ephesians uh, that we were dead in trespasses and sin. Uh, it's amazing to me, Brother Mike, that there are people who are walking around, who are breathing, whose heart's beating, uh, blood flowing through their body. They uh, walk around, they appear to be alive, but truly they're dead. Uh, uh, they're dead in their sins. Uh, uh, listen, you're dead to God, uh, and you're the in, at enmity with God. Uh, you don't know God. You don't know the things of God. Uh, Jesus said that he was the resurrection and the life. Uh, he came to give life and life more abundantly. Uh, my dear friends, uh, those that don't know Jesus aren't alive to God. Uh, but I've got good news. Uh, those that repent and trust in the Lord get saved, get born again. Uh, they become alive. Uh, Ephesians said we were dead in trespasses and sin, uh, but he hath quickened us, uh, hath made us alive. Uh, I'm glad I have eternal life. Uh, I'm glad I'm alive today. Uh, hey, uh, a river, uh, uh, it's flowing, uh, it's moving, it has life to it. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, for the life uh, that is within me. Uh, I'm glad he sealed me. Uh, I'm glad he saved me. Uh, he secured me. Uh, and I'm alive forevermore. Uh, thank God for folks that are alive. Uh, now listen, there's a lot of dead Baptists. Thank God for some, some that are alive. Hallelujah. Huh? Oh, you see, when, when you're alive, there's something that, that there's different about you. Amen. Because when you have living water, you're not only alive, you're animated. There's some movement. Amen, Pastor. Yeah. I want to tell you something. You can't be alive and stay the way you were. There's some movement in your life. You're moving towards God. You're moving for God. Uh, there's just something that compels you uh, from within. It's called the Holy Ghost. You just can't be what you used to be. And Brother James, even if you step in a mud puddle, you can't stay there. There's just something inside you that tells you you need to get your foot out of the mud puddle and get cleaned up. Listen, there's nobody that's above sin, uh, but there is a remedy for sin. Uh, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Uh, but I'm glad when he saves us, uh, uh, there's some movement that goes on in our life. Hmm? Amen, Pastor. Yeah. Just, we, we just not what we used to be. And some move at a slow pace, and some move very rapidly. But there's movement. Hmm? But Jack, you're not what you was since you got saved. You're different. Every now and then, uh, 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 you get a little overflowing going on inside there. I've seen you jump up and hoop and holler. And, uh, they're just something different. You'd have never come to church and do that before you got saved. Matter of fact, you didn't even want people to know you was in church. Uh, now you don't care who knows because you're here because you come to hear about Jesus. Uh, every now and then, he just does something for you, and there's some movement goes on in your life. huh? Can I say, you can't be alive and there ain't right, some movement. I've been alive for 56 years. There's been a lot of movement. Uh, my chest has moved into my drawers. My face is slowly falling off. Uh, it's amazing. I thought wrinkles was for that one dog that's made up of them, them sharp pays. Oh, man, no. I used to have one chin, now i got three. There's some movement goes on. In life, that's what happens. Some of y'all's hairline used to be here, now it's here. There's some movement that happens when you're alive. 
Can I say, when you're spiritually alive, there's some movement happens. There's some changes in your life. Your life becomes anim animated, huh? You have a reason to live. Amen. There's an excitement in your soul because you know this isn't the end. Sure. I was thinking this morning uh, over there where Paul said if there was no resurrection uh, that we above all men are most miserable. Yeah. I'm glad this isn't it. That's right. Those that are dead think that this is it. They think he that has the most toys wins. Uh, uh, all they're consumed with is life. Uh, uh, but I'm glad uh, this isn't it. Uh, uh, the best is yet to come. Uh, hey, what a blessing uh, to be alive, huh? You know what I say? He that is alive is not only animated, they're art ardent. They have passion. They're ardent about some things. They have a passion for the Bible. They have a passion for worship. They have a passion for Jesus. They have a passion to see other people come to get saved. They just have a passion for the things of God. When I was lost, I didn't like going to church. I had to go to church. Uh, my granddaddy was the preacher. My, my mama drug me to church every time the doors were open. It was just something we did. Uh, and, and Brother Ray, you know, I, I grew up with it, so I, I knew what was going on. And there were some people, they'd shout, and that was entertaining. Now imagine this, church I grew up in, we had about 20 of Phil's. Uh, I mean, all you'd have to do is start to say Jesus, and you'd hear, woo, you know. We used to have women that would shout. I mean, just let her go. Uh, used to, you know, I just grew up around it. You know, it's kind of like some of you grew up on a ball field. It doesn't upset you when people are hooping and holler and somebody hits a home run or scores a touchdown. Well, I grew up in church. It didn't bother me when people hoop and holler. That's what happened in church. What did bother me is when we'd sing some of them songs that were slow and would took, take 20 minutes to sing them. Uh, press along, weary pilgrim, press on slow, and it took up two pages in the songbook. And I, I couldn't stand that song, huh? Farther along, singing it real slow. Farther along, we'll know all about. By the time we get to that second stanza, I'm napping. You know what I'm saying? I didn't like that song. Huh? I went to church, but I didn't have a passion for it. You know what I had a passion for? A ball glove. That was my passion. Hmm? Uh, my dad come home from work. He wasn't allowed to eat supper till we tossed ball. I'd be sitting on the porch waiting for him to pull in the driveway. He had the gloves there and the ball, ready to, ready to throw ball. That's what I had a passion for. But all I'm going to remember tonight. Yeah. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Amen. When I was made alive, yeah. sure. Amen. I had something happen to me. Yeah. My passions changed. <laughs> Oh, now I have a passion for heavenly things. Now I have a passion for meaningful things. <laughs> oh, he still lets me enjoy watching a ball game, uh, but it's not my passion. Uh, I'll never forget when I left that big high-paying job to take that first church. Uh, couldn't pay me. You remember those days, Brother Ray? You only could pay me $150 a week. And that man that owned that multi-million dollar company that I ran, uh, he looked at me and he said, why would you leave all of this uh, for that? Uh, I said, rare is it in life uh, that you get to do your passion. Uh, and I've been doing my passion uh, for 20-something years now uh, because God is good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bless your heart. Amen. Living water shows you're alive. There'll be some animation. Sure. You'll be ardent. You'll have some passion for things that are heavenly. Mm -hmm. But can I say, too many Christians, something's happened to their living water. Amen. Can I say, some are in a drought. Oh, you got the place for the water, but the water's gotten real skimpy. We didn't have a drought this year around here. It's been several years since we've had a drought. I remember when the drought was on, I went to preach in South Carolina in this big old lake where everybody goes and skis and, and, and drags them big uh, 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 air 
tubes behind the boats and, and fish and all that. That very lake that I'd seen many times before, uh, 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 it was just a puddle. Uh, I mean, the docks were sitting down in the mud. Uh, there was no boats. There was no fishing. There was nothing. Uh, it was still a lake, but it didn't have much water. Some of you are in a drought. Where water once flowed, it's become scarce. You're not as animated as you used to be. You're not as ardent and passionate about the things of God as you used to be. Because your well is running dry. I got good news. He who gave you the drink has plenty of water. He's just waiting for you to get thirsty. Yeah. He didn't say he that's lost let him come. He said he that's a thirst. Uh, are you thirsty this morning? Uh, he's got plenty of water. Uh, he'll fill you back up. Uh, but you got to long to be mm, satisfied. Mm, have that thirst quenched in Jesus again. I thought about this. Too many Christians' rivers are not only in a drought, some are dammed up. There's something blocking the water from flowing. You ever been down and seen them big dams? They got down there on the Ohio River and how they control the water flow. And when that river gets up, it's a lost cause and it just goes. Huh? But can I say, they'll dam that water up and it can't flow. You know what dams the water from God and flowing in one of his children's life? Sin. Hmm. See, when you've got sin in your life, it's not that you've got a relationship problem with God. You're still God's youngin', But you've got a fellowship problem. See, God's blessings stop when we've got sin reigning in our life. Can I say you can't sin and win? Not with God. And when you've got sin in your life, friend, uh, it stops the blessings from flowing. It stops the living water from bubbling it stops God's touch being in your life. Sin will hinder the things of God. Do you know when you got sin in your life, God won't even hear your prayers? What well, has separated between you and your God, your sins and your iniquities. But I've got good news. He said in that same chapter, in Isaiah chapter 1, Come unto me, though your sins be his scarlet, they shall be white as wool. Huh? He's got provision for your sin. Uh, 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 he said if we'll confess our sin, uh, he's faithful and just to forgive us uh, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, you got a sin problem. Uh, I've got the answer. Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, his blood is still sufficient. Uh, he still cleanses from sin. Uh, and friend, when your sin gets cleansed and forgiven, uh, uh, the water starts flowing again. Uh, there are a lot of Baptist preachers that believe that once you sin, you put on a shelf and you're no good no more. There's only one problem. I've looked in that Bible. I can't find shelf in the Bible. I can find where your blessings stop when you got sin in your life. But I find when the sin is cleansed, God's blessing starts flowing again. You say, preacher, give me chapter and verse. I'm glad you ask. Go over there and read the life of David. He had sin in his life. He was guilty of the sin of adultery. He was guilty of murder. I mean, he was in bad shape. Uh, God sent the man of God down there, uh, preached to him. David said, that man ought to repay fourfold that man they told that, stole that sheep from. Uh, he said, thou art the man. Uh, David was the one. Uh, and David lost four sons uh, because of his sin. Uh, but listen, he paid for his sin. Uh, but listen to me. Uh, it did not stop David from being king. Uh, God still blessed him. Uh, and David did more for God after his great sin than he ever did before. So, uh, we don't like to talk about that. Now, I'm not advocating that you can sin and get away with it. There's a cost for sin. But God does forgive sin. And listen, uh, if it's under the blood and God's forgiven it, who are we to remember it? Huh? Thank God. Uh, that that living water can flow again, you get that sin forgiven. Uh, some Christians' rivers are in a drought. Some are dammed up. Some are dirty. 
You ever been down there and look at that Ohio River and it's just nasty and all that driftwood in it and it's, it looks like hot chocolate? <laughs> Nothing says, hey, I want to go take a dip in that. <laughs> can I say, even when it's just a little murky, do you know there's things in that river that can harm you? They got catfish in there weigh over 100 pounds. No thanks. Huh? Hmm. But listen, Miss Annette was watching this, this medical show the other day. And I just got in on a little bit of it. And it was this teenage girl. She was a bright young girl, successful in school. Everybody liked her. She was real popular. She had a good heart. I mean, when she got her driver's license, she wanted to be an organ donor. I mean, she just had a good heart, wanted to help other people. Just uh, all intents and purposes, you say this is just a wonderful young lady. And she went with some friends, and she went swimming in a river. This innocent just took a swim in the river. Now, I know some of you highfalutins got them swimming pools and all that stuff. You know, I remember swimming in the creek. We didn't even have rivers. We had creeks. Huh? Hey, this how I know y'all think I'm a city boy. This how this how redneck we were. We used to wash our cars in the creek. We found a low place, pull down there, take some soap. We washed it in the creek, man. Huh? Hey, when you lived with cistern water, you didn't want to waste all your water washing a goofy car. That's what creeks are for. I know y'all don't think I lived that way. I did, huh? Listen, I don't know. Were we married when we went down to Liberty? I don't know if we was married or not. I think we were dating. We went down to Liberty. One of my dad's relatives passed away, and he wanted us to go and to introduce his future daughter-in-law to all my redneck family. I'll never forget this. Miss Nett went into his bathroom. She looked down. She's looking at the ground. I mean, I'm talking about, I come, I come from the highfalutin crowd. I'm a true blue blood. Are you listening? But listen, this little girl, she went swimming in a river. If you grew up in the country, that's not an odd thing. A lot of times they'd have a rope to a tree and swing out in the river. I remember doing that. Innocent thing. This good girl swimming in the river. She got sick. Well, they did all these tests and they, they had her in the hospital and they couldn't find They found out she got a parasite that affected her system and she died. See, some of your rivers are dirty. Some of you got parasites you don't even know that's there. Can I say, you better be real careful judging somebody. You don't even know yourself what you're capable of. The Bible says the heart is deceitful and no man knoweth it. Can I say, there? you don't even know yourself what you're capable of and what you'll do in any situation. You ought to say what Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Are you listening? There are things in you that you don't know that's there and a certain trigger might come up. It might be that you got some dirty water. Are you listening? Hmm? Better be very careful. I learned a long time ago some horse sense. When you're pointing at somebody, three more is pointing back at you. You better be real careful. You might have some dirty water. I've heard preachers preach and say some of the most ridiculous things only to later be found guilty of them. Are you listening? You better be careful. You might have some dirty water. Again, you know what to handle that? The blood of Jesus Christ. You ought to abide at the feet of Jesus. You ought to live and walk in the grace of God. You ought to depend on His mercy, and you better, be, you better stay close to the cross because you don't know what's in your water. Are you listening? I thought about this. Some Christians, their rivers are dead water. Now here's another insight that some of you won't believe. I used to race canoes. It's true, I did. Huh? Matter of fact, uh, the guy who sponsored it, we had a team. We actually literally raced canoes. And the, and the guy who sponsored us actually rode in the Olympics. He did one of them deals where you kneel on that thing and you row it. And this guy had an upper body like you wouldn't believe because that's all he did was row. Uh, I used to r race canoes. We weren't bad at it. My partner and I was pretty good at it. And it wasn't them big aluminum ones you go down there at the river that's almost impossible. These suckers only sat out of the water about four inches. 
if you wasn't careful, you took on water, that thing was sinking. So we raced canoe. I was guy in the front, he was guy in the back. He steered it, I powered it. And we'd run down rivers, and every race was at least 10 miles down a river. And you long for them rapids. You hit them rapids, they'd shoot you out. Man, you'd get a lot of speed and a lot of thing. And you like that flowing water, man, you could go through that river. But invariably, every river I ever raced on, you come to a point, you hit dead water. And that's where the race is won. Dead water. You don't get any help from anything else. It's just you and your knowledge how to use those oars to get through that water. And can I, can I say it don't matter how big or how small you are, you're going to have to face that dead water. And on the other side of that dead water, you're going to pick up some more of that flowing water and you're going to get through the race. But you're going to have to go through that dead water. And can I say, right now it's winter time. We haven't had much winter. I've kind of enjoyed this winter, but you know what? There's a price for a mild winter. It don't kill off disease, don't kill off mosquitoes, don't kill off things, and, 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 and you know, when the ground don't get real frozen and all that, it, it affects springtime. But listen, in wintertime, you don't see much happen. Everything looks dead. Nothing looks, don't you like spring when everything starts blooming, everything turns green, everything's pretty, everything's wonderful. We love spring. Wintertime, no leaves on the trees. Everything just looks dead. Them cold, dreary, cloudy, overcast, dead days. Could I say you don't get to enjoy spring without going through winter? Yeah. Spiritually, you might be in a winter time. You might come to church and you're in dead water. You're doing everything right. You're praying, you're reading your Bible, you come to church, you're paying your tithes, you're being a witness and a light, uh, but it seems like everything you touch falls apart. Seem like everything in your life's going wrong. But you're still just paddling. You're still just doing your best. You're still trying to get through it. Uh, you come to church. Uh, you're just struggling. It's all you can do to get here. And you get here. Uh, and you come in. And there's old Phil shouting out the victory. You're thinking, Lord, have mercy. Uh, I wish I had flowing water. Uh, I wish I could shout. Uh, you see others weeping. You see others rejoicing. Others worshiping. Uh, and all you're doing is sitting there in dead water. Can I help you with something? Keep paddling. Keep paddling. Flowing waters are coming. Sure. It'll be worth it when you get to the flowing water. Yeah. It'll be worth it when you come through it. Some of the greatest words in the Bible are, and it came to pass. I'm glad it don't come to stay. I know trouble may be at your doorstep. I know heartache may be strong today. I know you may feel like a failure today. Just keep paddling. Just keep paddling. You don't know what he's been through to make him shout the way he shouts. You don't know what she's been through to get her to get up and sing. But friend, just keep paddling. Keep paddling. Dead water does subside. And you will reach the finish line if you keep paddling. Uh, can I say this? There are some people whose rivers are dangerous water. Yeah, I used to hear all the time, boy, I can't wait for it to get out of the banks. Well, they talk about the Spirit of God flowing so big that it just takes over the service. And I know what they mean, and I like it when it gets that way. But you know when a river gets out of its banks, it does damage. Paul said, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. One of the great doctrines of the Bible, probably in February on Wednesday night, I'm going to start a study. I don't like doing studies because I know me. I get to doing a study and we do a series. Right in the middle of that I'm getting to read. I'll read a verse like this living water. You get all over me. I'll come in and preach it instead of staying with the series. I'm not good on series. But I really feel compelled to do a series on true Baptist distinctives. Uh, a lot of folks claim to be Baptists aren't Baptists. You got liberals and you got Pharisees. Well, we're going to preach and teach what the Bible says about being a Baptist. You know why I'm a Baptist? Because I believe that's the Bible way. Amen. But we're going to do a study on what a real Baptist is. One of the things that our Baptist forefathers died for, the two big things that the Catholic Church and the Crusades hunted us down for and martyred us, number one, we would not accept infant baptism. It's not water that puts you into heaven. It's the blood of Christ. Amen. And number two was something that isn't even preached and taught in our Baptist churches anymore. 
soul liberty. Can I say, I don't have to follow a creed to please God. I have to follow the Bible to please God. And as a Bible believer, there are certain things that God will mature you in and grow you in. And the more you're in the Bible, the more the Bible gets in you. And God will teach you some things from the Bible. And He will give you something called personal convictions. There's a difference between a Bible conviction. If God says, thou shalt, you better. If God says, thou shalt not, you better not. That's a Bible conviction. But then there's a personal conviction. Where the closer you get to the Lord, and the more you mature in the Lord, there are things the Lord will put in your life that He wants you to live by. Now, Brother James, I cannot expect you to live by my personal conviction. It's my personal conviction. But it's where God's brought me to a point in my life where He knows there are certain things in my life that I don't need or that may harm me or that may cause my river to become dangerous. And so He says, you better not do that. There are some people it would never affect. And there are other people it will affect. And there are certain things in my life that if I do not follow the Holy Ghost of God and what He's put in my life... It will cause damage. There are dangerous rivers. If you leave living water unchecked without personal convictions, it will cause damage. That's why we have 300 different denominations in America. Because people did not know how to rightly divide the word and did not know how to really embrace soul liberty, so they made up their own rules. And that is dangerous and causes problems. And can I say there are dangerous rivers. Let me conclude this thing by saying this. In order to have living water, one must be converted. You must be born again. If you're not saved, you don't have living water, and everything I said did not make a lick of sense to you today. You can see some of the examples of it in people, but you don't personally know anything about it. I've done this before. I'm not going to do it now. It's getting close to lunchtime. Make y'all mad. I could describe like a steak that I've eaten. But if you've not eaten there, you don't know anything about it. Well, when I describe eternal life and I describe what God's doing in my soul, you don't have a clue. You've got to be converted to have living water. But it's amazing. If you're saved, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Can I say, not only must you be converted but to have living water. Not dammed up water, not dirty water. Not, to have living water, you must be close to the source. You want to have living water, just stay close to Jesus. And it'll flow, bro. And then, can I say this? In order to have living water, you've got to be clean. In Revelation, it talks about a river coming from the throne which is clear as crystal. When you stay close to the source, that's the water that will be flowing in your soul. It will be clean. God help us to stay clean. If the inside's clean, the outside will be clean. Too many want to clean up the outside and leave the inside dirty. It doesn't work that way. Amen. You can put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. Right. Hmm? But if you get cleaned up by Jesus... It'll take care of the outside. Let me ask you a question. Do you have living water? Have you been born again? If not, you can be today. The moment we're going to have an invitation. You come, we'll show you how to be saved. How to believe on the Lord rather than believe in Him. If you're here today and you're saved, how's your water? How's it flowing? See, too many Christians are just pleased with tap water. You ever seen water that goes through one of them Brita filters that come out of the tap? It's a big difference. You're just satisfied having water. Difference between having water and having clean water. There's some things I don't want to drink. It's got lead in it, contaminants in it. It's going to affect you the wrong way. How's your water? Is it dammed up? 
Are you in a drought? Maybe you're in dead water. You ought to get in this altar and say, God, help me to keep paddling. If you're in a drought, you ought to say, Lord, I, I sure would like another drink. If your water's dirty or dammed up, why don't you come get it cleaned up? But don't leave here the same way you came in. Leave here with folks noticing. You've got living water. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. When it comes, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for living water. Thank you for what the Holy Ghost does in our life. Leads us and guides us into all truth. Lord, gives us comfort and peace and joy. Love, long-suffering, all the fruits of the Spirit. Now, Father, I pray, a crowd this size, there may be somebody that's never experienced living water. They've never been born again. God, I pray you'd speak to their heart. Help them not to be torn. Just help them to come and trust. God, I pray for those that are saved, but their water just doesn't flow like it used to variant of reasons. I pray they'd get them and get that straightened out. Boy, if one's thirsty, Lord, I pray they'd come get a good drink. Lord, if one's in dead water, help them. Give them strength to keep paddling. Oh, it's hard. But Lord, keep, help them to keep paddling. It'll be worth it when they get back to living water. They're in a valley, Lord. Give them strength. Or whatever the need is, I pray you'd bless this invitation. Don't let Satan do what he did to that crowd that day. Where folks were divided. Help folks come to trust in the Lord. God speaking this invitation. Get glory. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.